video, we're going to continue our study of Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy's Classical Ethics course. We're going to be reading chapter 5 of book 2. Let's read the text together and discuss any points that come up as we go along. Chapter 5 of book 2 in Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. In the next place, <clears throat> we must consider what virtue is. So in chapter 5, we're going to answer the important question, what is virtue? What exactly is virtue? Since, therefore, three things are produced in the soul, and let's keep this all in mind as we read, since three things are produced in the soul, what are these three things? Passions, powers, and habits. Three things are produced in the soul. Passions, powers, and habits. And because this is true, something follows. Since three things are produced in the soul, passions, powers, and habits, virtue will be one of these. Because three things are produced in the soul, virtue will be one of these. So what are these? What are passions, powers, and habits? Aristotle explains here. I call passions, indeed, desire, anger, audacity, envy, joy, love, hatred, cupidity, emulation, pity, and, in short, those things to which pleasure or pain are consequent. Second, I denominate powers those things according to which we are said to be susceptible of the passions, namely, according to which we are able to be angry or pained or are inclined to pity. These are the powers. But I call those things habits, according to which we are well or ill disposed towards the passions. I call habits those things according to which we are well or ill disposed towards the passions. So it's important to note that in defining those three terms, uh, three things that are produced in the soul, first Ar uh, Aristotle defines passions. He gives us a list of passions those things to which pleasure or pain are consequent. And then passions, the knowledge of passions, is required to understand what powers and habits are, because they relate to the passions. Thus, for instance, with respect to being angry, if we are vehemently or remissly disposed towards it, we are badly affected. But if moderately disposed towards it, we are well affected. And in a similar manner with respect to the other passions. Neither the virtues, therefore, nor the vices are passions. So virtues and vices are not passions because we are not said to be worthy or depraved according to the passions. But we are said to be so, worthy or depraved, good or evil, according to the virtues or vices. And because according to the passions, we are neither praised nor blamed. For neither he who is afraid nor he who is angry is praised, 
nor he who is simply angry blamed. But he who is angry in a certain manner. We are praised or blamed according to the virtues and vices. Farther still, we may be angry and afraid without any deliberate intention of being so. But the virtues are certain deliberate elections or choices. The virtues are certain deliberate elections or are not without deliberate choice. In addition to this also, we are said to be moved according to the passions, but we are not said to be moved according to the virtues and vices, but to be disposed in a certain way. On this account, neither are the virtues powers, for we are neither said to be good nor bad from being able to suffer, nor are we through this either praised nor blamed. And again, we possess the powers from nature, but from nature we do not become either good or bad. We have, however, spoken concerning this before. If, therefore, the, the virtues are neither passions nor powers, it remains that they must be habits. And thus we have shown what virtue is generically. We have identified the genus of virtue, that virtue is a kind or species of habits. Okay? So in this fifth chapter of Book 2, obviously this is a very important chapter where Aristotle tells us what virtue is. He says that virtue is a habit of the soul. Virtue is a certain kind of habit of the soul. The soul, uh, in the soul, passions, powers, and habits are produced. Passions are the things that move us. And he gives a list there. Notice that the word passion, um, we can think of ways that this word is used. Say, the passion of Christ. What does it mean? It means things that were done to Christ which he suffered. Okay? He was arrested. He was uh, crowned with thorns. He was scourged at the pillar. He was judged by Pilate. He was beaten by the guards. He was clothed in a robe. He was crucified. Those were the actions that Jesus suffered. His passion. Things that happened to him. Voluntarily, of course, but things that happened to him. Okay? The passions are things that happen to us. Okay? The passions are things that happen to us. And the list of them includes desire. We desire things. That's just natural. Anger is natural. Audacity, envy, the feeling of envy is natural. Joy is a natural result. Hatred, love, cupidity, emulation, pity, things to which pleasure and pain are consequent. Pleasure and pain follow from these things. Okay? Those are the passions. They're in us by nature. That's why it's not evil, for example, to be angry. Anger is natural. But as Aristotle says, to be angry in a certain way becomes evil. Okay? To love is to love something is not necessarily evil, but it can be if we love say the wrong thing or love in the wrong way. So the passions are these natural um, we could say feelings. The idea is that they, they arise within us by nature and they don't make us good or bad. They're just natural. Then the powers, the powers, Aristotle says, are the actual capacity 
to have and experience the passions. And that power, because it's natural, or it's, it's in generated in us, it's born in us. Since it's born in us by nature, we can't be guilty of, uh, we can't be praised or blamed for it. It's just natural. But the habits, however, the habits are in our control. And we are praised and blamed because of the habits produced in our souls. And then he concludes that because virtues are not passions and virtues are not powers, because we're praised and blamed for virtues and vices, and we're not praised or blamed for passions or powers, therefore virtues must be habits. And then he says, if the virtues are neither passions nor powers, it remains that they are habits. And thus we have shown what virtue is, generically speaking, or with regard to its genus. What is virtue? Virtue is a habit, a praiseworthy habit of the soul. All right? And that wraps up for us the content of chapter 5. So I hope that's a helpful introduction. It's a, an important chapter, obviously. Pretty simple, I think, to follow. Um, make sure you study these chapters for mastery. One thing you notice is that each of these chapters has been pretty simple in its content. Taken by itself, the chapters are pretty simple. But what you notice is our knowledge and, and the, the content of this study, Aristotle's teaching, is really beginning to multiply now. You know, we've learned, we've learned a lot of important concepts. Um, and you need to make sure that you're taking time to review, keeping this uh, together in your mind, because Aristotle, in these chapters, continues to provide us with an introduction to prepare us for the actual study of the individual virtues and vices, which is going to be the real focus of this book as we continue into later chapters and books, okay? So take time to review. Realize that while each of these chapters has been pretty simple to understand, the content is starting to really multiply now, and it's important content. For example, in chapter 4, we studied the three conditions of virtuous actions. That's important. Here we study what virtue is. We study the three things produced in the soul. These things are important, okay? So take time to go back, review, and make sure you master and retain the knowledge and content of these lessons. So now it's time for you to go study for mastery. Um, I look forward to seeing the assessments that you submit. Please remember that these videos are intended for enrolled students uh, who are supporting the academy, who are submitting assignments for review, and progressing through their study in the classical liberal arts. I hope these introductions are helpful. May God bless your studies.